Hey, I know it's been a while since I've made a video, but uh, since it's May the 4th, I wanted to do a Star Wars video. And it's how, you know, I feel that uh, Grey Jedi is not cheating. So I'm going to talk about Grey Jedi a little bit first, then I'll, afterwards I'm going to talk about Star Wars and, you know, my love for it and so on. Uh, anyways, um... <clears throat> So as we know, in the Star Wars universe, we have the dark side and the light side. The dark side of the Force is the darker emotions, you know, fear, anger, hatred, and aggression, you know, lead to the dark side, and, you know, um, the dark side uh, is powered by these emotions and responded to these emotions. You know, it's a corrupting power. Whereas the light side is the calmer, you know, the more... You know, something to be used more defensively. You know, it's not attacking, it's, you know, only as a defense. Now, Grey Jedi is something that's only previously been seen in books, comics, and video games. And coming soon, it's going to be in uh, movies. Now, the Grey Force, uh, side of the Force, is something that combines both sides. The, uh, you know, that, um... It, both light and dark, or that uh, with the gray side of the force, there is no light or dark. You know, a gray Jedi can be both Sith and Jedi, you know, and that a uh, gray Jedi is balanced, you know, and some are saying that, um, you know, this is cheating, that, you know, it, it's, you know, there's, that there's, there will be no cost to tapping into both sides of the force, and that's not playing by the rules, and you know things like that you know that it just you know it makes it too easy that um it, it removes the element of choice you know the, taking away the choice of being a uh, dark side or light side and so on but here's my thing in most myth mythologies myths legends so on there's always a triumphant of power um, and that is, you know, three powers that hold the universe together, you know, like the Force. Um, there's the higher power, the cosmic power. There's the lower power, or the earthly power. And then in between these, there's the power that bridges the gap between the two. And, you know, there's, you know, Zeus in the cosmos. There's Hades in the underworld. And between them is Poseidon. If, um, for the those of you who believe in the Christian uh, religion, uh, those of you who believe in the Holy Trinity, there's the Father, the Holy Ghost, and the Son. You know, the Holy Ghost being the bridgehead between these two. You know, in some versions that, you know, Mary is filled with the Holy Ghost, that the Holy Ghost is taking the essence of God from one plane to another. And, you know, there are plenty of other you know, um, religions, mythologies, legends that have, you know, a triple power, you know, um, beings or energies, what have you, that, that there's this greater cosmic power like Zeus or, you know, um, other, you know, various deities that rule on a higher planet or there's deities that rule on a lower plane, either the earth or the underworld, whatever. Then between these two, there's a deity or power energy that connects the two. You know, so there's always been, you know, powers, energies that come in three. You know, because three is always an important number in any myth, legend, religion, whatever. You know, <clears throat> so of course there's the great Jedi. Of course there's the light side of the force, the dark side of the force, and the gray in between them, you know, because it's the gray that's going to restore balance, you know. I mean, in the dreaded prequels, we were told that balance has to be restored to the Force. And, you know, some may question, well, how is it out of balance? You know, there's, you know, because previously we've had in, you know, um, before, the dark and the light, and that's all we knew. You know, that there was the dark side and the light side. You know, for the original trilogy, it was, you know, 
<clears throat> it seemed that the dark was very much in power and the light struggles to, you know, um, overcome the Empire. And whereas, you know, the prequels uh, tell us that there's going to be a chosen one that's going to restore balance. And again, in every legend, myth, um, so on, there's always a person, messiah, what have you, that brings balance to things. Even in things like, you know, uh, tragedy, you know, um, Hamlet, who is very much an anti-hero, recognizes his role. You know, time is out of joint. Oh, curse is despite that I was born to set it right. You know, he realizes that things are out of joint and that he's the one that has to restore balance. You know, again, because he's an anti-hero, he does not do this in correct manner because everyone around him dies. You know, the, the, you know, he doesn't achieve things the way he should have. You know, his mother dies by poison and, you know, only then does he act against Claudius and, you know, all this mess and so on. You know, but in other legends and stories, there's, you know, a being who always restores balance or bridges, you know, gaps between either life and death. I mean, even in um, the myths of Heracles, you know, there's some myths where, you know, his best friend, his wife, is dying. So Heracles, he goes to, you know, um, what's her, you know, her burial, and he essentially stops the god of death from taking her by physically, you know, um, battling him and pushing him off. Um, and <clears throat> so he stops death, and he brings her back, and, you know, she is able to live on. Or, there's legends where Heracles actually goes to the underworld, you know, and, you know, it's all, of course, to get the dog Cerberus. Um, and, you know, so he's going from the living world to the world of the dead, and he's bringing something back, um, you know, for a short time, of course. You know, so there, are, you know, he's a hero that is, you know, bridging life between death. And there are plenty of, you know, heroes, figures in uh, mythology, legends, and so on, that do this. That's, you know, bridge the gap between life and death, or bridge the gap between one power or the other. <clears throat> so again, of course there's a gray side of the force. Of course there's the great Jedi, you know. That's what's going to bring us balance. That's what's going to bring the force together in unity. That the great Jedi is going to bring things together. That, you know, you know, and I, I think, I suspect, this is why Luke is saying that the Jedi have to come to an end. And why it, the title is The Last Jedi. Of course, I'm just theorizing because the movie isn't out yet. You know, uh, anyways, I think this is the my theory of why it is. That, you know, the Jedi are going to end because the gray side of the force is going to bring an end to both the Sith and the Jedi. And that the gray side of the force is going to at last restore balance. You know, so, you know, that's my theory. That, uh, and my, you know, thoughts on, on this. That, no, it's not cheating because it's a, it's responding to comic myth and comic, common, <laughs> Uh, myths and legends about cosmic powers that there's always a trinity and always three, you know. And this is at last showing in movies that in Star Wars universe that we have this trinity. <clears throat> so that's my thoughts. You know, for um, just me talking about Star Wars and so on. Now, <clears throat> I was born in 1974. Um, so I was three years old when original trilogy, uh, uh, the original movie came out. Um, no episode title, uh, you know, no episode whatever, no special edition, no special flipping edition needed, in my opinion. Anyways, I think, you know, I read the comics first, you know, I, you know, because I, my father swears that, uh, uh, 
was seeing the movie that I was um, saying, well, that's not how it happened in the comics, especially how, you know, what happens to Vader at the end. Um, but I believe I've read the comics first um, and got them a collection of this uh, nice graphic novel, which really beautifully uh, reprints them and recolorizes them. And it's just a beautiful job here. So glad I got this. Um, so I think I've read the comics first before seeing the movie and then saw the original movie in theaters and you know of course you know being a child of that time you know i fell in love with it um there and there are you know different types of fans there are the fans like myself who were alive at the time and saw it in theaters then there's people like my sisters for example who were you know, um, born either after the movies, the original movies, or, you know, when the series was wrapping up. And they're more familiar with it because of, you know, video rentals and massive repeats and so on. <clears throat> you know, so there was an original movie that, of course, kick-started it all off and is probably one of the best movies of the entire Star Wars movies, you know, bar none. Because even if we didn't get another Star Wars movie, this, you know, told the story from beginning of end. You know, even if we never learned anything more about the Star Wars universe, this still would have been a complete movie, you know? Okay, fine, Vader doesn't get, uh, you know, um, he's still out there, but it's still a complete movie in a sense, you know? It still has every element to it so that you need for a complete movie. You know, and it was, you know, almost a surprise that a new one came out. And, um, you know, again, for a child of the time to learn what is revealed was shocking. You know, now to, you know, people who know the story, who, you know, know what happens, you know, um, it, it it's commonplace. But... You know, to not know this, go into this, you know, it's shocking, you know. <clears throat> and, you know, the Return of the Jedi was, you know, at the time, it was the conclusion. And, you know, very well done conclusion. And, um, <clears throat> you, know, it, you know, it seemed like an end of an era, you know, in some ways, of the original trilogy. And that's, and that's what the original trilogy was. And why it's maybe, you know, I, I believe that Star Wars is a very generational thing, you know. And, you know, the original trilogy was very much for, you know, a certain generation, for the 70s kids, the 80s kids, either seeing it in theater or on home movie, whatever, you know, Laserdisc or, you know, VHS, what have you. And, of course, I'm one of the sticklers for non-special editions. I've made that clear already. You know, <clears throat> because, okay, fine. CGI can bring you a lot and can do a lot and achieve a lot. But, because it is an artificial process, it has an artificial feel. Practical effects, you know, you feel the workmanship going in there. You know, I mean, Jabba the Hutt is a masterpiece of puppetry, um, you know, and how he is created and worked, <clears throat> you know, and, you know, it's just, it's very much, it's what, you know, kids like me grew up with, what we came to love, and, you know, it, it's very much part of our, um, our world. You know, and, you know, of course, when there were news of the prequels coming out, we were all excited. But because it's been so long of a gap and because Lucas didn't take as much care as he did originally, there was some disappointment. You know, there are things about the prequels trilogy I don't mind. I'm okay with. Um, but some things could be better. Um, Jar Jar definitely is one of the things that let the series down. You know, um, Phantom Menace is not the strongest one, 
you know, and Attack of Clones was somewhat better. Um, Revenge of the Sith, in my opinion, is the best of the prequels, you know, and um, it is very well done, you know. You know, I don't mind watching the prequels, you know, it's just, it's not as good, you know. Uh, again, it's entertaining, it's decent, but it's not as good as it could have been. I very much like Force Awakens and what it's brought to us, and, you know, the the three-year-old kid wanted to go see Phantom S and, you know, come alive again. Unfortunately, that didn't happen. Force Awakens, that three-year-old kid who saw the original movie was indeed awakened, did come alive again, and, you know, and was there again, you know, um, and, you, you know, and I'm very much excited uh, with where the new movies are going, you know, Force Awakens was well done, does it, you know, you know, retread things from the movie. Yeah, it kind of does, but I can maybe understand why it does. You know, maybe partly because people were so disappointed with the prequels that, you know, <clears throat> we they decided to play it safe. Um, so that's what they do. You know, yeah, maybe the story is all over the place, but, you know, it, it's, it's a decent movie. It has comedy where it needs to be. It has characters well developed and where they need to be, you know. And it still keeps a guessing, you know. You know who's Snoke, and you know what's going on here, and you know it, it's getting us. It's setting us up, up for. It's getting us excited again for Star Wars. That's what Force Awakens' main job is to get us excited again and get us questioning again. It's the next movie that's gonna tell us more that's gonna fill in the blanks kind of Probably maybe still leave things up in the air uh, so we can get excited for the final <clears throat> and you know get us excited to how it's all gonna wrap up you know Rogue One I thought was very well done and is exactly what a prequel needed to be and it is a very good almost set up for the original movie you know and it's 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 a very good setting in that you get to know what it's like to be living under the empire as if you're in a sort of stalinistic naziistic like world you know you know what are you doing here you know where are your paper your identity card uh, what are you doing up after curfew are these the droids we're looking for you know that sort of uh, mentality of not having personal freedom, and you're constantly under watch by this militant uh, empire, and um, and and also we have this element where the rebels, you know, the guy has this line, um, you know, we're assassins, you know, we're murderers, and whatnot. You know, in order to fight this terrible power, they have to be just as bad. You know, and the point is that it, um, that it's not so that it's just to take down the Emperor. And it's not that you, we recognize we're not the ones that are, are going to rebuild afterwards. We recognize that we are not going to be the ones that survive this. We're doing this just to take them down in the hope that someone is going to settle things in the end. And unfortunately, something as massive as the Empire doesn't get taken down and it reassembles itself into the First Order um, and you know um, reforms itself <clears throat> you know <clears throat> and you know Leia uh, and, and, and let me just go off a little bit here that um, yes it is very sad what happened to Carrie Fisher. Um, unfortunately, because of her past, you know, and her uh, some, some things, you know, led to the this heart complications and uh, she's no longer with us. That's very sad to me, you know, and because of her past and her, you know, 
the way she lived her life. Um, she may not have looked very, you know, um, you know, it, it affected her look, you know, and unfortunately people were kind of negative of that, you know, I view it in, in this way. Um, just for the sake of taking it as the story, you know, just to take it out of the reality of, yes, she's lived a hard life and, you know, and her body is showing that. Um, to look at it in the point of view within the story. Here's this woman. Her brother is gone. Doesn't She doesn't know where she is. He is. Um, she has an estranged relationship with her husband. Her son has essentially joined the dark side and it become the devil. You know, and the empire hasn't vanished and has reformed itself. So everything she's fought against is still kind of there that you know the Vader element hasn't gone away because it's being rekindled with you know Kylo Ren and I refuse to call him by his birth name after what he did um, anyways it's um, being reawakened by her son Kylo Ren and you know so she's had this struggle and you know, she has to deal with that everything I'm struggle is still here and still, you know, come alive. So that's kind of why she's where she is. And, you know, she's tired out with this struggle, but she's still resilient. She's still fighting because this is who Leia is, that she's endured all these hardships. She's bent, but she is not broken. You know, you know Han. Yeah, he because of Harrison Ford's age. You know, he kind of you know also may look you know different, but you know, look at it within the context of the story. You know, his son going in that path. You know, he goes back to smuggling, and that's kind of a rough life. You know, and you know things like that. <clears throat> And, you know, <clears throat> anyways, um, to get back to, you know, things, um, point is that I believe that, um, uh, first off, that the Great Jedi is very much, is perfectly okay within the setting of the Star Wars universe, and is fitting, and it goes along with mythical, you know, backgrounds, um, and I've said, you know, Star Wars is very much, you know, it's part of my childhood. This is part of many people's childhoods. You know, it it means a lot to a lot of people. It's also a generational thing. You know, it responds to certain generations and certain generations looking at different ways. You know, people who were born after the 80s look at the movies in a different way, you know, um... They respond to it in different ways. <clears throat> Hopefully they're, you know, being raised with the uh, original trilogy. And unfortunately it's hard to get hold of the theatrical versions. I'm very lucky and I got a version that has those. It's uh, actually a two-disc version on each of these. You know, so on this first disc it's a special edition. Second disc is the, the theatrical. I, of course, only watch the theatrical. Because that's how you properly watch the original trilogy. <clears throat> Anyways, I hope you enjoyed my ramblings. Um, I do intend to upload more videos. I do want to continue my Batman videos. I did actually have a lot of them already. Unfortunately, due to some, some, some computer issues, I no longer have a lot of these videos and they're no longer existent. So I have to go re-record them all over again, which is a daunting task. And you know, it's, it's kind of hard sometimes to work up the energy to do that. You know, um, this for me is a hobby. You know, I already have a working job. This is not necessarily a uh, YouTube is not a job job for me. It's more of a hobby. You know, I am thinking of getting a Patreon, Patreon, and you know, linking it to my videos and doing that. Um, so, you know, I, I do plan to continue. It, it, it may just may take me a little bit. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you for watching. Take care.